Now there are different types of research evidence out there and it's really important that we understand the different types. There's quantitative research and quantitative research is research that looks at interventional studies and outcomes research. It's the type of studies that you do a lot of statistical analyses with. These types of studies are things like clinical trials, randomized control trials, case control studies, and the highest levels would be meta-analyses and systematic reviews. Clinical practice guidelines, for the most part, are based off of quantitative research analysis. There's another type of research out there, and it's called qualitative research. And qualitative research is really done to understand the human behavior, how people are responding to their situation. So the types of qualitative research that you see done, and it's very often done in nursing and social sciences, are studies like phenomenology, where you look at the phenomenon of being sick or having a certain condition. It also means looking at ethnographic groups. This is based out of anthropology. So we look at groups of people who have a certain condition. We know that qualitative research is very, very important to how we deliver care today because you need to make sure that your patients are having a good experience with the care they're receiving. Now the highest level of research is considered secondary research and this is the thing that we call a systematic review or meta-analyses. And what is different about a systematic review and a meta-analyses is that it brings the same level of rigor to the review of all the research studies that have been done on a specific topic. It brings the same level of rigor to the analysis of all those studies. Here's another caveat. Systematic reviews are very different than literature reviews because systematic reviews and meta-analyses actually have to be peer reviewed. So that means two or more people have to be appraising all the studies that are included in a systematic review or a meta-analyses. When you do a systematic review, you also need to look at a few other things to make sure that it's important to how we provide care to our patients. You need to look at, is it really feasible, the results of the systematic review? Can I really implement this with a specific patient population? Is it going to be appropriate? Is it meaningful to patient populations and to my practice as a healthcare provider? And is it going to be effective? Is it really going to make a difference? We do know, though, that research evidence is not created equal. So it's really important when healthcare providers take a look at the research that they get from a search, they need to determine what level of research they're looking at. At the base, we have all the original research studies. And these are the things like the randomized control studies and, and those type of things. The next level up would be the systematic reviews and the meta-analyses. Again, the systematic review meta-analyses is done by a researcher looking at all the original research around a certain topic, doing a critical appraisal of it, and a synthesis of it, and then putting it together as a systematic review. So that's considered the higher level of, of research um, in the hierarchy of evidence. But at the very top is our clinical decision support. And clinical decision support are tools that healthcare providers can use, they read immediately, and they go put into practice immediately. Now why is this important? Because healthcare providers at the bedside do not have time to read 100, 200, 300 page systematic reviews or meta-analysis and then go make a decision about a patient. They have to read the evidence and put it into practice immediately. And that's what clinical decision support tools do. All clinical decision support tools should be based on systematic reviews, meta-analyses, evidence summaries, or the best available evidence.